Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be talking to you about cutting tools. Whoa, that was really close. <laughs> so I'll be sharing with you my favorite cutting tools, the cutting instruments that I use on a daily basis. Um, so I will take you over to the cutting table where we can look at these up close and I'll talk a little bit more about them. And in case you are wondering, I am wearing one of my recent makes, which check out that sleeve detail, which is why I like it, these little pleats. It's Berta Style 6296. It's an oversized sweater. Um, can't really see it, but I'll link the video where I did show the whole thing in case you want to know about it. Um, but let's go ahead and just jump into this video and look at all of my cutting tools. Let's start with my favorite scissors for cutting paper, uh, meaning cutting out pattern pieces. These are by Scotch. They have titanium blades. I buy them in a three pack from Amazon and I think it costs about 11 to $12. Um, it comes in a pack with blue, pink, and green handles. And I just really like how these feel in my hand. I think it's really important that you, um, that the scissors feel good in your hands. Um, of course, that the blades are sharp and that they last a long time. Um, I don't sharpen these. They're cheap enough where I just buy another pack if I need to. However, these last a long time. They stay sharp for a really long time. And as you can tell, I am right-handed. I do not know if these come in left-handed. I am assumed that they do. But in any case, um, these are my favorite scissors for cutting paper and I'm sure you already know but if you don't do not use your fabric shears on paper have a designated pair of scissors for paper moving on we're going to talk about my favorite fabric shears and these are by Kai these are the 7250s um, you can get left-handed shears by Kai they have many different um, models they have uh cheaper ones these run about i don't know 40 to 50 dollars but i will say spending money on a good pair of shears is not a stupid move um, cutting fabric is obviously an essential part of sewing and to have a good pair of shears that last a while and will, it will help enable you as well to cut fabric more evenly and smoothly so I do really, I really do uh, recommend investing in good cutting tools. So these are um, nice, they're not too heavy. I feel like sometimes scissors can be too heavy, um, but they're a good weight, they feel substantial. I've had these, oh, I don't know, maybe two years or so, um, and they still cut like butter. Kai does offer a service where you can send the scissors in and they'll sharpen them for $7.50. I haven't done that yet, but you can also get your scissors, any pairs of scissors, sharpened at um, a local sharpening place or knife store, I bet. But these are Japanese steel, by the way. Um, and Japanese steel does have a reputation for its sharpness and its longevity. Um, sticking with the scissors before moving on to rotary cutters, these are from Ginger, and Ginger um, are very popular scissors. These were made in Italy. These are micro serrated blades. That means you can see the little serrations there. It's like almost like little teeth or ridges. The reason for those is that it helps keep super fine or slippy fabric from slipping too much. Um, you know, if you've got really fine fabric or that slippery polyester or charmeuse kind of fabric or silk, um, it could slip and you could cut inaccurately. So these are really great for that. Ginger is another great brand of scissors. These are substantial. They're not too heavy. They're, they're just a wonderful pair of scissors for when I want to cut finer or more slippy fabrics. I have another pair of gingers here, and these are five inch scissors, five inch, I don't know on Amazon, I think they call them five inch craft or five inch tailor scissors, I can't remember. I like these because sometimes you need to trim um, tight areas of fabric, like let's say you are trimming the seam allowance on a neckline. 
or you need to um, you need to notch areas. These are really good for getting into those tight areas or areas where you need to be really cautious so you're not clipping through, you know, your seam lines. These are wonderful. They are sharp. They get right in there. They nip well. They're just, they're awesome. I cannot be without these. I mean, I can't be without any of these things I'm showing you, to be honest. I love these little guys. So another pair of gingers. Then we've got these. This is just a basic pair of like little nippers. Um, these happen to be Fiskars. They've worked really well over the years. They're great for having, you know, just having them by your sewing machine. If you want to nip threads, you don't have to worry about putting your hand into handles and working them that way. You can just, you see how easy it is. Great for nipping threads. And then we have our pinking shears. So pinking shears, they have these little teeth, these little triangle teeth that look like little alligators or something. So these are by Fiskars. Um, so pinking shears, what they do is, let me show you. Found a piece of fabric here that we can cut. This isn't a woven fabric, but they're, they're really great with wovens because it keeps the fabric from fraying. So as you can see, you've got these, these little triangles and those triangles make it that the, so that the cut is diagonal, it's on the bias and fabric doesn't really unravel when it's on the bias. So that's what these teeth are for. It's to get those angular cuts so that your fabric doesn't unravel. So if you don't have a serger, these are definitely a must. And I still use these sometimes if I don't want to serge something or maybe there's a tight area that I don't serge. You can just go in there and clip your seams with pinking shears. I believe Kai and um, maybe um, Ginger and other brands do make pinking shears. I just happen to have these Fiskars and they do work fine. Moving on to rotary cutters. Now rotary cutters are my preferred way of cutting fabric pieces out. Um, sometimes I do use my scissors, probably if I have like longer stretches of, uh, let's say, uh, straighter edges, I tend, I might use these. It just, it just depends, I don't know. I don't really have a method, but lately I've been preferring my rotary cutters and I really like these rotary cutters from Kai. So let's talk about this this bigger one. This one is the one I use the most. This is the 5045 and this is 45 millimeter blade size. And so here you can set it from soft to hard. And what that means is it's the amount of pressure required for you to push down on the blade for it to um, cut. So I keep mine at about medium. Um, you know, if you go, if you keep it at soft, then you don't have to push down very hard for the blade. See what happens is when you push down, the blade comes out and it cuts. If you push it to hard, it requires more pressure for me pushing down to get that blade out to cut. I hope that makes sense. Um, I really like this. Now I have tried, I have Ulfa rotary cutters. I also have Fiskars. I have about three or four other pairs and th these by Kai, this one by Kai, hands down my favorite. Um, and then for the smaller one, I think this is 28 millimeter. So, you know, sometimes when you're going into necklines or there's finer details, uh, it's hard to get that 45, uh, that 45 millimeter blade in there. So you want to be able to get in closely to the little turns or, or whatever it is. And so I, I think it's super ha helpful to have a 28 millimeter pair as, or this isn't a pair, blade as well. Definitely can't live without this one. Like I said, I can't live without all of them. Um, let me talk to you about the blades though, the replacement blades. So here I have a Kai 45 millimeter 
blade as a replacement and then the 28 millimeters come in packs of two. These are great. They do last longer than these generic blades. Um, they are of course more expensive. Um, or if you want, um, because the price is quite a bit different, these aren't bad. These last through several projects. Um, I can't remember how many come in here, maybe a pack of 10. I'll link all of these supplies below and you can check them out. But honestly, because of the price difference, um, I just buy these generic brands. Somalux is the brand. Um, yes, these do last longer, the Kai um, tungsten blades. But I'm not entirely sure they last so much longer that it's worth the price difference. Maybe I should actually start recording and um, collecting data on that so I can tell you the, the honest truth. But just um, I, I don't think so. But this is this is a cheaper option. It's it's definitely a lot cheaper to buy a pack of these than than this. So uh, you have to have options, right? Okay, so this one, you're probably like, what is that? So this is a, um, it's a hot knife, basically. And I picked this up, this tip up from Kenneth D. King, who is a contributing um, writer and also a blueprint craft scene class instructor and an author to all these lovely sewing guru. It's a sewing guru, basically. I got the tip that when you have a metallic fabric like a lame and even something like this, let's, I just happen to have this on my counter. Um, so you've got these metallic threads in there. If you cut the fabric with this hot knife, it seals the edges of your fabric so that you don't have this fraying and um, you, it even looks more so in some metallic fabrics, especially the lame. This is a, um, I think this is a brocade, poly brocade and lorex brocade I got at Joanne. But, but for something that is mostly metallic, this is going to work really well to seal those edges. And you can buy replacement tips if you need to. They, they are delicate and they can break if you don't treat this well. And I'm just gonna talk about my favorite seam ripper. Um, technically, I don't know if you wanna call this a cutting tool, but to me it is. Um, it's a blade, so I'm gonna count it. Clover, these makes my favorite ones. I feel like they last a long time. I really like the handle. Um, so let's just... Now, if you could see here, hopefully you can get that close. Whoa. You've got this nice, fine, pointed tip. If you look at this one, which is a more like, let's say cheapy one, I feel like the blade isn't, uh, it's thicker. You probably can't tell, but to me it is, it's thicker, especially this part here. And that's one reason I really like the clovers and I think that they stay sharper longer, as I mentioned. I buy these in three packs from Amazon and they last a really long time. Okay, so those are my favorite cutting tools. If you have favorite cutting tools like scissors or rotary cutters, or if you have a place where you like to buy inexpensive replacement blades for rotary cutters, because that's what I buy the most of, let me know in the comments below. Um, for now, I like my Seminole, what is, can't pronounce it, Seminole. Some Alex blades, I think they work fine for the price, but um, if you have ones that you really like and you think they're really great for the price, let me know, I'll try them out. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video.